Jesus said, Let the little children come to me and do not hinder them. And one thing's for certain, when Jesus says it, it is. We're grateful that through the generosity of the CCLS community, each year more and more children come to Jesus to learn. I am a child of God, loved and saved by Jesus. What is our purpose? To make God known through servant leadership. We do this by loving God and loving our neighbor. Here at CCLS, we're transforming lives through Christ-centered education. Chapel here at Christ Community Lutheran School. It's a pleasure to see you all. Special welcome to our friends and our families who are joining us this morning, those online, uh, maybe in a different state. It's so great to be together in this uh, house of worship with you today. Uh, throughout the year, students, you worked hard, you had fun, and you did it. This is the last day of school. And we're going to end the last day of school just the way we started it. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Would you please rise as you're able to join with us in the opening hymn. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, this is the day that you have made, and we rejoice and are glad in it. We thank you for the tremendous blessings you poured out upon us here at CCLS. Through your spirit, you've led these students to grow in faith in you and their love for each other. Lord, we thank you for the tremendous gifts you've blessed us with this year, especially the people that you surrounded our children with, their loving parents and grandparents, our faithful teachers and leaders, our nurses, and many more staff. Lord, there's so much to thank you for. Lord, we do not take for granted uh, the safety that we have had this year, uh, coming together each day, learning about your world, and learning about your love for us. We pray your continued blessing upon our school and safety for all of our children and our families as they go out this summer for rest and restoration. We pray all this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Please be seated. As is our tradition the last three years, uh, we at this service share the, the awards for the Character Project. Uh, the Robert and Lori Duesenberg Civic Character Scholarship 
is a merit-based scholarship and it's awarded and it fits along with our core values here at CCLS. And the Merit Award is funded annually by the earnings of the Charger Legacy Fund and it's named in honor of Robert and Lori Duesenberg. So the way this works is every year I invite fifth through seventh graders to partake in this civic character formation project. It's outside their normal work, so they volunteer to do this. And just as we do every day through the character project that's linked to biblical lessons, they take a historical figure and they explore their character, take their virtue and then apply it to their lives and do a, uh, a service project. And uh, this year we have uh, three uh, winners in our uh, project. The first one in fifth grade is Ada Clark. <laughs> Ada Clark studied Paul McCartney in his uh, song uh, Blackbird. She uh, sang it and played the guitar to it for our uh, um, talent show, but also took it to a senior living community and played for them and many other songs. So well done, Ada. And it, yeah. As a winner of this project, Ada will receive a $2,000 scholarship for the upcoming year. And in uh, sixth grade, the winner is Eva Bordalo. <laughs> Eva studied Laura Ingalls Wilder. Uh, you can see there the drawing up there. That's just one frame of a video that she created describing how she connected to her with the courage. Uh, her service project was working with Christian Friends of New Americans and tutoring uh, during the week. Great job, Eva, and Eva also will have a scholarship. <laughs> and then finally, our seventh grade winner is Freya Blackman. Studying the philanthropy of uh, Dolly Parton and her love for children and reading, uh, Freya collected $800 for a, a preschool in the city and uh, gathered toys, materials, and books for them. Great job, Freya. <laughs> and again, each one of these uh, winners will uh, receive a $2,000 scholarship for next year. But, uh, Years ago, we were putting this character formation project together, and we talked to a lot of different schools and a lot of different uh, funding organizations. And the question was always, how do you quantify character? Can you assess character? Give us the data, right? And uh, I always wondered, like, how do you do that? You know, I mean, what kind of assessment assesses character? It's so fluid. Let me put it this way. Um, Story sometimes is data with heart. And let me give you a story of how uh, our uh, young men and women are growing in their character. Uh, just this past week, as tradition at CCLS, sometimes our alumni will stop by and visit their teachers and, and uh, other students. And uh, this week we had a, uh, one of our alumna stop by and she had won the character formation project a couple years ago when she was in seventh grade. She received the $2,000 award. And she stopped by my office and she said, uh, I want to give back half of what I got from the Character Project Award. And she gave me a check for $1,000 to ensure that more kids could have a Christ-centered education. That's character. <laughs> so I thank the teachers, I thank everyone involved in this and thank the students for focusing on character and growing in that uh, relationship with Christ and sharing it with the world, being serving leaders. Great job. Continue on. And now we hear uh, a reading from God's word, our theme verse this year from 1 Corinthians 13, 13. If I speak in tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers 
and understand all mysteries and all knowledge. And if I have all faith, so as to remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. If I give away all I have, and if I deliver up my body to be burned, but have not love, I gain nothing. Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It is not rejoiced in wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. As for prophecies, they will pass away. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part, but when the perfect comes, the partial will pass away. Child, I spoke like a child, thought like a child, and like a child. When I became a man, I gave up childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I have been fully known. So now faith, hope, and love abide. These three, but the greatest of these is love. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Dear Christian friends, well, as you all know, our theme this year was faith, hope, and love. But that kind of assumes you know how to fill in the blank. Faith in whom? Hope in what? And love for whom? So I was thinking today, maybe we should finish off the year with a fill in the blank assessment. So students, don't worry about it, you're done. This is your last day, you graduated, no more assessments for you here at least. And uh, you've all been working so hard, I wouldn't dare give you another assessment. But we are gonna do an assessment, a fill in the blank assessment for all the parents and all the teachers and all the adults here. 
on faith, hope, and love. Now, pedagogically, this might not be the most rigorous test you've ever taken. It's going to be fill in the blank. I'm going to put a verse up there. And when you see the blank, you're going to fill it in with one or two words. Some or all. Got it? Some or all. Now, you might think this is really easy and it's not a big deal, but it is a big deal because the difference between some and all is huge. For example, some of you might be traveling over Memorial Day weekend. If you get on the plane and the pilot says, I like to land this plane some of the times, I don't think you're getting on that plane. You're not going to have faith in him, right? Okay, so you're starting to get it. All right, students, I told you no assessment. It's not on you, but you can play along and you can help your parents. I mean, they helped you out with homework all these years. You can help them out a little bit today. It's called reverse mentoring, and it's a really good thing. Help them with their technology. Help them fill in the blank. All right, here we go. Faith in whom? First verse. We're going to take the first verse up there, and let me give you a little context. Jesus is talking to a group of people, and he says, it is easier for a camel to go through an eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter the kingdom of heaven. And the disciples say, whoa, wait a minute, this is impossible. And Jesus says, now everyone fill in the blank when I get there, with man this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. Hey, good group. Got the first one right. Notice, our faith is in a God in whom all things are possible. Not just any God, the God with whom all things are possible. Okay, here's another one for you. Paul wrote to the Philippians, he said, I can do all things to Christ who strengthens me. Two for two, way to go. It's kind of like when you're at the ball game and the, they do that shell game and they move the shell around. If you don't know, just listen to the crowd. Usually they get it. All right. Here we go. Third one. And Jesus came and said to them, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. You know, we just celebrated ascension last night when Jesus ascended into heaven, and th these were his closing words. And it's really important in a, in a world where sometimes things feel like they're out of control to know that we have faith in a God who has all authority in heaven and on earth. Okay, next one. Ready? All scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for create, correction, and for the training in righteousness that the man of God may be complete and equipped for every good work. Okay? All of God's word. Second graders, that's why Mrs. Ladd takes you through all the Old Testament when you're reading. That's why our character formation project covers all of the Bible in four years. Okay, that's faith. We know that we have a faith in a God who can do all things and is all powerful and is all in for us. Okay, next, let's go to hope. This is the category of hope. Hope in what? I mean, what are we hoping for? What are we looking forward to? First verse. For the lamb in the midst of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of living water, and God will wipe away tears from their eyes. Not some of your tears, all of your tears. God's planning to fix everything. Let's go on to the next verse. And he who was seated on the throne said, behold, I am making things new. He's not just going to make some things new. He's making all things new and all things good, just as he had purposed and planned from the beginning. One more verse for hope. What are we hoping for? Now this, some context. Mrs. Ladd's class, you probably read this in Genesis while you're reading through Genesis. But this is a, a promise to Abraham. And he was looking forward to this hope. God said, I will bless those who bless you, and him who dishonors you I will curse, and in you the families of the earth shall be blessed. Through Abraham's descendant, Jesus Christ, all the families of the earth are blessed. That's why here at CCLS we see our brothers and sisters in Christ in Uganda loving Jesus just like we're loving Jesus and being loved and saved by Jesus just as we are. Great. Let's go on to the last category. Love for whom? 
Jesus said, go therefore and make disciples of nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. That was Jesus' direction to us. All nations, just like God had promised Abraham. And many of you, not, not many of you, many of you have been baptized, but some of you this, this year have been baptized even in this church. This is good, and it is pleasing in the sight of God our Savior, who desires people to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God, and there is one mediator between God and men, the man, Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for not some, but all. He gave his life as a ransom for all of you. All of you. And Jesus, when he directs us to live out that relationship with him to others, and God, he said this. And Jesus said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with your heart and with your soul and with your mind. Brothers and sisters in Christ, I think I got a theme for next year. Jesus in everything is all in. All in is our theme for next year because our God is all in for us. Check out this verse from Colossians. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of his cross. It's kind of a long verse, so let me just break it down for you. God was all in Jesus, and Jesus' love was all in on that cross so that we could be all in God's family. Amen. May the peace of God that surpasses all human understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Okay, now we're going to invite Mr. Hartman to come forward. Mr. Hartman is our principal at the middle school, and he is going to introduce to us all of our graduates. They graduated last night. And uh, graduates, I just want to thank you for coming this morning and being a part of us, even though you graduated last night. It's good to see you, and uh, Lord's blessings as you continue on serving God in the various ways. Mr. Hartman, take it away. Thank you. Last night we had the pleasure to celebrate 49, 49 students over here. In a second, we're gonna, actually, we might as well start. Miriam, would you lead everybody all the way down the cross? Line the front. Come on, Miriam. Come on over. Come on down. Line up. Last night, we had the pleasure of celebrating the graduating CCLS class of 2022. And in a moment, we're going to show you a little bit about them. So this is our kindergartners, right? This, you guys are all kindergarten, right? Nine years from now, this will be you. Many of these students here were in your spot years ago. That was before you were born. Yeah, it'll go just like that, moms and dads. So we celebrated with a lot of accomplishments, a lot of awards, many scholarships. 49 students I mentioned. These 49 students are going to represent 16 different high schools next year around the St. Louis area. We had, I can't even count number of students we had come forward that received scholarships from Lutheran South, Vianney, Incarnate Word, this Met, etc. All right, let's see. Maybe scoot down a little bit, get tight, closer together. Yeah. They're sporting their class trip t-shirts today. Yeah. Nice. All right. What we're going to do is we're going to play some slides for you next, and I'm going to announce them. We're going to start from this end, and maybe you could just wave back, smile, whatever, when your screen comes up. So the first graduate was Miriam Anderson. Miriam's going to go to Lutheran High South, and she hopes to be a writer someday. That's good job. Next, we have Nathan Burbank. Nathan also is going to go to Lutheran South, and he still hasn't figured out what he wants to be when he grows up. That's okay, because neither have I. Yeah. 
Also, Finn Clark. Finn is going to go to Lutheran South, and he wants to be an entrepreneur. That means he wants to do lots of things that are fantastic. All right, next, Claire Curtis. Good job of waving, Claire. She is, oh, I forgot to change that slide. She is actually going to be attending Melville High School, and she wants to be a bakery owner, so go get some good baked goods from her in the future. Then we have Becca Delaney. Becca wants to go to Lutheran South to be a photographer. Then we have Cooper DeShriver. Cooper is going to go to Lutheran South and be an engineer and on the side play the drums. Cooper is one of four eighth graders, I think, that got band scholarships at Lutheran South. And he actually had a couple of special awards for band. He and Nathan Burbank, who we already mentioned, are going to be the only two fresh Lutheran South Wind Symphony next year. So congratulations to those two. Yeah. All right. Next, we have Alika Detter going to Lutheran South. Alika is going to be a chiropractor or a dancer in the NFL or NBA, maybe even both. Addie is going to go to Westminster, and she hopes to be a pediatric physical therapist or my favorite, NASCAR driver. I also think it'd be cool to be a NASCAR driver. Then we have Cami Dunachek, happens to be a class valedictorian for her years of work in school, boys and girls. That means that she had the highest grade point average of all these 49 students for the last three years. Good job, Cami. She's going to get. Cammie's going to go to Lindbergh and become a physical therapist. Then we have Carolina Fickler, going to attend Lutheran South and wants to be a veterinarian. I always need veterinarians. Then we have Olivia Gorline, who's going to go to Lutheran South. She wants to be a writer, an actress, and an criminal interrogator. Oh, boy, I'm in trouble. <laughs> also, Chris Heinlein is going to go to Lutheran South, and he's still not sure what he wants to do. It's okay, he's got lots of time to figure it out. Then we have Jordan Hemler going to go to Lutheran South and become a computer programmer. I think he's already been doing some of that already. He's going to do well. Then we have Carolyn Coralyn, excuse me, Hesse, going to Pattonville High School and wants to be an anesthesiologist. Yes. Elise Hayner. Are you still waving? Are you still waving? Yeah, yeah. Elise Hayner is going to go to Lutheran South, and she wants to be an early childhood teacher or an interior designer. We talked to Mrs. Lee, Mrs. Klug. Maybe someday she'll be over here. Kate Hollingsworth is going to attend Westminster and wants to be interior designer. There's three of these students that are going to come back and help me with my office someday. Yeah. Next, Kendra Howard. Kendra is going to Lutheran South, and right now she still isn't quite sure what she wants to do in the future. Then we have Jack Hunker. He's going to go to Vianney, and he also wants to be an entrepreneur. Anna Lynn Janes is going to go to Incarnate Word. She wants to be an animator or an interior designer. She probably could do both, actually. Jackson Jockins is going to Lutheran South. And he helps to be a medic, a marine, or an engineer. The field's wide open. Then we have Ben Karsten. He's going to go to Vianney and hopes to be an engineer. Lots of engineers in this class. DM Kabesh is going to go to Westminster. And he's either engineer or sales. I think he'd be really good at sales. <laughs> also, Emmy Ender. She's so line. Hopes to be a doctor. Hannah Kirshner is going to go to Lutheran South. Military, a teacher, and or writer, any of those things would be fantastic. And then Emily Neese is going to Marquette, also hoping to be either a doctor or a nurse. So the future is looking good for us with these eighth graders. Then we have Avery LeClaire. She's going to go to St. Joseph's Academy and hopes to be an interior designer as well. Addie Lee is going to go to Nairings Hall, and she would like to be a writer also. 
And we, David Lofton is going to go to Lutheran South. He hopes to be a software developer. Excuse me. That's impressive. Chase Lowry is going to go to Lutheran South, and she also wants to be something to a fashion or interior design. Exciting careers you guys are chosen. Liam Mafud Thurman going to the Smet High School, and apparently he wants my job. Front office. <laughs> he probably strives for something more than that, right? <laughs> He'd be good at it. Next, we have Jay Maynard. I got him out of order. He's going to attend Viani, and he also hopes to be an engineer. Did you wave, Jay? Did you wave? Don't forget to wave. Come on. They want to know who you are. Next, Natty Maurer. Natty Maurer is going to Lutheran South. She hopes to be a dermatologist. Then we have Cooper Neifert. Cooper Neifert is going to Lutheran South and wants to be a neuroscientist. You guys have any idea what that means? I don't either. Cora Oaks is going to go to Nairing Hall and hopes to be a deep sea marine biologist. So I guess we will not really see her around St. Louis much after high school. Jamie Olson is going to go to Eureka and he wants to be a defense lawyer. And for the record, Jamie, I didn't do it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Avery Palmer is going to go to Lutheran South and also hopes to be either a teacher or a nurse. We'd love to have Avery teaching at CCLS someday. Grant Pollitz is going to go to Lutheran South and also aspire to be an engineer. Next, Sydney Fister is going to Lutheran South and either a coach or physical therapist. I know she'd be great at either one of those. Connor Pittman is going to Lutheran South and he's it's a time to figure out what he wants to do. Grace Prang going to Lutheran South, and she wants to be that an author, which would be a otolaryngologist. I've practiced this all night long, I still think it right. All I can tell you is that Dr. Hayner explained this to us last night. He said, "This for this slide alone is why he went to the seminary to learn Greek." Because he can tell you that just by looking at that it means ear, note, and throat, throat doctor. And then Nora Riley is going to Parkway South, and she is going to be a kindergarten teacher. She would be fantastic at that as well. Pearson Dario is going to Viani and hopes to be a police officer. Jacob Stack also going to Lutheran South and wants to be either a drafting architect or a pediatrician. Ava Toner headed to Lutheran South, and she hopes to be a pharmacist. Car Car Caroline Turner going to Lutheran South and or both a mechanical or electrical engineer and I promised her I found out this morning I did not have information she was one of the students that got a band scholarship for Lutheran South that was not shared with me before graduation last night but I found out after so I told her I would celebrate that this morning Then we have Anna Ullery. Anna Ullery is going to go to Kirkwood High School and either be a lawyer or an architect. Moving on to Kate Waddell, who's attending Rockwood Summit, hopes to be a pharmacist or a teacher. Maddie Williams is going to Lutheran South and is either going to be a psychiatrist or a heptologist. And finally in this class, Bailey Wilson is going to attend Lutheran South and either be a social worker or something in advertising. Congratulations. How about a big hand for our graduates this year? Okay. One last thing. One last thing. Raise your hand if you started CCLS either in preschool or kindergarten. Quite a few of them. Look at that. How many of you started CCLS in the middle school, 5th, 6th, 7th, or 8th grade? So we have quite a lot of fantastic new faces all over here, too. Boys and girls, kindergarten, 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 4th grade, 5th and 6th, 7th grade. One day, you'll be up here as well. We wish nothing but the best to our graduating class. Thank you for being here this morning, even though you're official, you don't have to be. I didn't really phrase it to them that way, though. <laughs> yes. Well done.
Yes, thank you. You may head back to your seat. And now, this is teacher recognition. There we go. I was trying to figure out what was next. Thank you. As the students make their way back, or graduates, I, I should say, <coughs> make their way back, each year we want to recognize our teachers. And uh, we live in a time where we have a teacher shortage across America, uh, not just in Lutheran schools, but across America and all of our schools. And so we're really blessed to have the teachers. We have incredible men and women who dedicate their lives uh, to growing these students. Um, I said uh, one day, you know, an artist makes art, but Mr. Fiala makes the artist, right? He creates the artist. And I could use that example over and over again to talk about how our teachers are building the future. And many of you were equipped and inspired by your teachers one day as well. <clears throat> so again, we want to recognize the service of our teachers uh, throughout the years. First of all, for those who have uh, served, next slide, please. Five years of service in Lutheran education, Stephen Bernal. Natalie Boone and Kitty Ogden. And then we have those who've served five years of service here at CCLS, Emily Callison, Michelle Numala, and Wendy Wagner. Darcy Teasdale has served 10 years here at CCLS. Jessica Berner, Linda Hirsch, and that guy have served <laughs> 20 years of service. <laughs> Time flies when you're having fun. Mr. Spangler, John Spangler, has served 25 years in LCMS education. <laughs> Mr. Hartman, 30 years of service in LCMS education. <laughs> Think about that, 30 years, all those bad jokes. I mean, that's a lot. <laughs> but where is he? But Mr. Harmon, we love those jokes. <laughs> Keep them up. 35 years of service, Don Utrecht. And Mrs. Leet has, has them all beat. 40 years of service at CCLS. <laughs> Back up to Mrs. Lee for a second. Now, you might be wondering, like, 40 years, we, 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 we got to celebrate. We're going to have a party. Well, we've been talking about this for a while, and we decided we're going to take a whole year to party with Mrs. Lee. So next year, she has uh, let us know that uh, next year will be her last full year serving as principal here at CCLS. And uh, we're going to take all next year celebrating you for your incredible work and service to the Lord and to these children. Think about the exponential impact Mrs. Leet has had on the lives of people with 40 years of time just here at CCLS. But here's the deal. Next year, she's celebrating her 50th year in Lutheran education. Think about that. And as I said, we'll, we'll take a whole year to celebrate and enjoy our time with you. So thank you. We also have uh, a teacher leaving us the next year, Grace Stearns. 
She um, has been with us uh, five years at CCLS, and she is going to Virginia to uh, serve at another Lutheran school. Uh, Grace has been working towards becoming a leader. Uh, not only do we have a teacher shortage, but we also have a leadership sh shortage. And so we've been training and, and working and equipping uh, Grace to take on th those next steps, and this will be an opportunity for her to, to be a leader as well. So thank you, Grace, for all that you've done here at CCLS. And then we have two incredible women who have served us so faithfully for so many years that are retiring. And retiring is just, uh, someone once put it, is like going and putting a new set of tires on so God can call you to do something different and take you on a different road. But uh, Connie Bickle has served 24 years at CCLS, 29 years in Lutheran education. She's one of our uh, early childhood leads over at the Crestwood campus. And uh, for those of you who have never experienced uh, Mrs. Bickle's classroom, I mean, when it's Holy Week, I mean, she's, she's got the Lord's table out there and, and everything. She's got the Garden of Gethsemane. I mean, it's just so hands-on with the kids, and her love is, is uh, bubbling out uh, every day. So thank you, Connie. And then uh, Claudia Starnes has just been with us, has been with us for 15 years at CCLS and 21 years in Lutheran education. And just a, a tremendous teacher, a master teacher, uh, with the early childhood program, but also just a huge supporter of CCLS throughout the years and a connector to help families connect to churches and Christ. So uh, we are truly blessed to have these women and we'll be celebrating them um, uh, with some lunches and some other um, uh, and gatherings. So. And at this time, yes. And at this time, if I could invite Pastor Christensen to come forward. So, Pastor Christensen is retiring this year from full-time service for 26 years of service at Webster Gardens and 40 years of service in the pastoral ministry. It's awesome. <laughs> what some of you probably don't know is my first call was to Holy Cross in O'Fallon where I served with Pastor Christensen's parents, Don and Florence. And what a wonderful couple they were, and you could see the love for Jesus and the love for people each and every day. And so when I came into the area and, and got to know you, I expected no, no, nothing less. And, you know, the character sh certainly was um, caught from your parents and exudes from you, and, and especially your love for Christ. My question for you, Pastor Christensen, is you've dedicated 40 years of your life to pastoral ministry. We've got a couple of young men over there that are still undecided. Was it worth it? You know, I, I was looking at those uh, slides with people, not that one, but, you know, where people said undecided or they had that word I can't pronounce and <laughs> all those other things. And when I was in eighth grade, if you were to ask me what my career aspiration was, I was going to be a baseball player for the Chicago Cubs. That was it. <laughs> and then, you know, when I was in high school, I was going to become a veterinarian. I was in pre-vet classes at Mizzou. And then I went to Valparaiso University. I was going to be a psychologist, and then I, I was going to be a teacher. And uh, even at the seminary, I didn't know if I ever wanted to be a parish pastor until my third year at the seminary. And it's worth it. It is worth it. So even if you've already said, you know what, I want to become whatever it is, that veterinarian or whatever, boy, you know, God can call you to be a pastor. I think about this, students. Maybe this summer there's a big trip your family is planning. And mom and dad say, you know what, if you clean up your room, we're going to go on that trip to Disney World. Or if you mow the yard a few times, we're going to go on that trip to the lake. Or if you do this and help your little sister, then you can do that. And you're going to say, well, is it worth it? Is it worth it? Well, you, it is. It is. I would do a lot of things that go on a special trip. But what I've been able to do for uh, 40 years, I remember over here, Dr. Hainer, I remember one time, it was a Sunday evening, and some people who lived in China were baptized. Mm. Boy, that makes it worth it. I remember talking to a CCLS dad, and this dad, he didn't know Jesus well, but his kids were going to CCLS. And I said, tell me about what you're learning about God. He says, well, my child has to learn memory work. And I said, great. And he said, so I'm learning it too. 
And I said, what are you learning about Jesus? And he talked about forgiveness and grace. Boy, that's worth it. Mm -hmm. That's worth it. Or I remember uh, watching a child who had been in a fight with somebody else at school, and they learned how to forgive and how to say, I blew it, I'm sorry. Boy, that's, that's worth it. And so there's so many things that have happened for me over 40 years, and it, it's worth it because there's nothing better than knowing Jesus. And there's nothing better than seeing people grow and to know Jesus better and better. And there's nothing better. I had a funeral yesterday where people say, yeah, my, my wife is in heaven. Or there's nothing better than when Jesus comes again. Nothing better. Nothing awesome. better. It's worth it. So, boys, let me just say this. Uh, God, God says that Jesus gives gifts, and that his best gift is himself, but he also gives the gifts of pastors, teachers. We need pastors. Boys, there's nothing better. And boys and girls, there's nothing better than being a teacher. Wow, I have great respect for you leaders, you teachers. And thank you for what you do. Think about how God's going to use you. Nothing better. It's great. worth it. Thank you, Pastor. Yeah. So I'm going to ask Pastor Christensen to close us out with prayer and the benediction. But before that, I've got a couple instructions for you. Uh, after the benediction, we'll sing our closing hymn. And then parents, if you could just remain seated until we um, recess out all the, the, the students and get them to their classes, and then uh, you can go from there. And we hope to see you at the picnic this afternoon at Kirkwood Park. Pastor, would you? So faith in whom? In Jesus, hope in what? Especially hope when Jesus comes again. And love for whom? Love for all. Let's quiet ourselves. Let's pray. Lord, pour your favor on everybody gathered here right now. Lord, let your spirit work so that we grow in faith in you. Let your spirit work so that we have hope and confidence that there's a better day yet to come and that you, Jesus, will come back. And let pour your favor upon us so that we love our friends, we love our family, we love our enemies, and we love you with all that we are. Thanks, Lord, for this year. Protect us this summer, but use us in great ways to serve other people. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you faith, hope, and love. Amen.
Thank you everybody for being here. Congratulations to our eighth graders. A couple of housekeeping things. Kindergartners, we're gonna let you go out first because I know you're gonna go regroup and then you're coming back in. Um, so you may go. So we, um, we also, Ms. Regan would like a picture with which grades? Okay, so sixth grades, if you'll start coming down here to the front, we're gonna do a picture. Eighth grade, if you'll come over here in the middle and let's do picture and the both grades. We're gonna do a quick picture. While they're doing that, seventh grade, you may head on to the classrooms to get your stuff. The buses are out this door.